Hello there, and in this video we're going to talk about how to measure the variation between two numerical variables, and we're going to refer to them arbitrarily as x and y. Uh, so this measure variation is going to be referred to as the covariance between two data values, x and y. And as usual, we're going to have a population and a sample version, so our population is going to be equal to the sum of the product of the differences between the variables and their corresponding means, divided by the either population size or the sample size minus one, uh, depending on whether it is a sampler or population. And you can easily do this in Excel via the relationships covariance.p of x and y and covariance.s of x and y. Here, x and y are separate columns co collecting our x and y values. All right, so let's work through a example manually and then sort of discuss how to interpret uh, the covariance of a data set. All right, so let's assume we have a sample of x, y values. Uh, suppose this is 2, 5, 3, 7, and 4, 12. Uh, so once you have your data values, you can collect them in two columns, x and y. Uh, sometimes it's easy to view it like this. So our x values are 2, 3, and 4, with y values 5, 7, and 12. Uh, so from this you can get the means, x bar and y bar, to be equal to 3 and 8 respectively. So x bar is going to be 2 plus 3 plus 4 divided by 3, and y bar is 5 plus 7 plus 12 divided by 3. Alright, so from here we can calculate our covariance. So the covariance of a data set, x, y, is going to be equal to the sum of the products of the differences between x and x bar and y minus y bar divided by n minus 1. So uh, for the first term, uh, that's going to be equal to what? So that's going to be 2 minus the mean of x, 3, times y, which is 5, minus the mean of 8. So that's going to be for the first value. And then plus, we'll do the same for the second. So 3 minus 3 times 7 minus 8. And then for the last one, it's going to be 4 minus 3 times 12 minus 8, all divided by 3 minus 1. All right, so from here, what do we get? So once you calculate all this out, uh, you should get something approximately equal to 3.5. So this is the covariance of x and y. Uh, so what does this number mean? What does it mean to have a covariance of 3.5? Uh, so if we were to plot our data out, uh, so we have x values of uh, 2, 3, and 4, and we have y values of 5, 7, and 12. So if we look at these data values, they're generally increasing. Uh, because you know the slope between these two points is positive, the slope between those two points is positive, and the slope between those two points is positive as well. So they're all, or in generally, mostly, all positive slopes. Positive slopes. So if all the slopes are positively uh, oriented, uh, eventually you'll realize uh, that the covariance between these two data points is always going to be positive as well. Uh, so we can state some of the properties for the covariance as follows. So for the covariance, some properties. Uh, the first thing uh, that uh, some people will realize is the covariance between two values x and y is between negative infinity and infinity. Uh, so that means you can have a positive or a negative or a zero covariance, uh, depending on your different values of y. Unlike the variance of a single data set where variance can only be positive, covariance doesn't have that special uh, uh, property. Uh, the second is, if the covariance between x and y is greater than zero, then this will imply that x and y are positively correlated. Uh, that is, is, you pretty much see an upward trend in the data. So it could pretty much, you know, if you plot a bunch of points, uh, definitely then there, there's going to be a positive upward trend for the majority of the data. Uh, thirdly, uh, if the covariance between x and y is less than zero, then that's going to imply that x and y are negatively 
correlated. So that means if you plot your values again, uh, even if there is some positive value here, uh, most of the values are going to be downward sloping. And fourthly, if the covariance of x and y is approximately equal to zero, then that implies either x and y are not positively or negatively correlated. Or it could imply that x and y is symmetrically both positive and negative. correlated positively and negatively correlated uh, so two cases uh, here so the case where it's not uh, correlated at all uh, suppose you have just points scattered and you can't really see any upwards or downwards trend um, a circle would be another fine example um, but also if you have a upward trend and also a negative trend and the same exact pattern where if we sort of split it up into two sections sort of here where we have an upward trend here and a downward trend here those slopes will pretty much balance each other out so the trend pretty much uh, turns out to be zero uh, and this is both of the cases uh, where the covariance is going to be equal to zero so pretty much uh, you can use this for anything at all uh, no matter as long as x and y are positive uh, uh, numerical variables uh, and you can test without looking at the actual scatter plot um, but usually most people do anyway uh, whether the data is going to be positive or negative or not uh, uh, correlated with one another and we'll go into a couple more interpretations and applications of correlation and covariance in the upcoming videos